Hello everybody once again, this is Aqua Kazoo. Welcome back to another video here. This will be the Tree of Savior leveling guide for 1 to 100. Alright, I know that Tree of Savior will be released soon for free to play on the 29th of April. So I want to make sure that people who do not actually have read a leveling guide or who want some head start in terms of information when they start uh, their leveling journey in Tree of Savior will have something to look forward to. Of course, there are many leveling guides that are available out right there, but some of you guys might not have read it, some of you guys might have read it, but I'm going to give you guys my value addedness as usual, just like the old days for Dragoness. Alright, hopefully my guide will have some form of value, uh, along with all the other guides that are available right uh, now on the interwebs. Alright, so let's get to it. This guide will tell you some basic information about leveling in Tree of Savior. It will show you, uh, sorry, it will tell you when to use the EXP cards. It will also show you the level 32 to 45 grinding spots and also show the level 65 to 86 grinding spots and these grinding spots will be especially useful for people who are going to go hardcore you know when you reach level 50 you do your dungeon your dungeon you limit your dungeons and you want to continue leveling you want to hit the level 90 as soon as possible so you can be ahead of the pack so that'll be very important for you i'll also be sharing with you my insights and other extremely useful links that will really make the quality of, quality of life in tree of silver for you to be much better and smoother. Alright, so let's start with basic information. The level cap in Tree of Savior is currently 280. And for those who play MMOs, be like, whoa, 280 levels? That's pretty high. And does that mean that I have to grind? You know, is it hard to reach that level? So fortunately, I won't say that there's no grind. I also won't say that it's easy. But fortunately for Tree of Savior, there's a unique leveling system where the EXP curve resets at certain levels. What this means is like, for example, the first EXP curve resets at level 46. So let's say the EXP you need to level from 45 to 46 is 200,000 and after you hit 46, the EXP curve resets and the next level will only require about 7,000 EXP. So this will happen 4 more times at level 86, at 136, at 186 and 236. So 4 more times. So what does this mean? All right. This means that like the 10 levels before the EXP curve actually resets will be level range where it is actually very hard for you to level because that is when you need the most EXP. So what this means is that you need to use or usually you will want to use your EXP cards during this, uh, this phase so that you can get by this tough uh, leveling phase before you hit the next reset by just popping cards. All right. So this guy will actually tell you that, you know, when to pop your cards and of course with clever usage of your cards, your EXP cards, you will actually be able to skip, essentially skip these uh, very tough and grinding, grindy uh, level range in Trail of Savior. And the other way to look at it is if you actually pop all your cards and you hit like let's say level 180, 180 to 186 will be hell for you because number one, there is no good grinding spot for you where you can actually grind efficiently. And you might be stuck at that level for a long period of time. And in some cases, you might be stuck at a level where you, you're, you're too low level to do the next dungeon. Or you're too low level to do quests as well. And you'll, you'll find yourself in a very awkward position. And some people even just re-roll when you get to that, that point. Because it just takes too long for them to get by a certain level range. So when to use your EXP cards is very, very important here in Tree of Savior. So where do you get EXP cards? You get EXP cards primarily from completing quests in Tree of Savior. And the first thing you need to know about quests in Tree of Savior is that there is no indicator on NPCs that have them. There are indicators on the map for main quest, which is indicated by an orange, orangey flag. That is like main quest. But aside from that, you will not see any form of indicator on top of NPCs. Not like WoW where you have like an exclamation mark, whoa, on top of their heads shouting to you, there's quest. No, in Tree of Savior, there is no indicator. Of course, when you go to them and you accept quests, there will be indicator on their their fall, their hits. But before you actually accept the quest, you will not get any indicator. So any NPC that you meet, any object that you can interact with, make sure you just go there and press the space bar to see if you have anything to do with it. Sometimes an object will trigger a quest line when you talk to it or when you interact with it. So make sure that you do that. But to make sure that you don't miss any quest, there will be two links that I'll share with you right now. The first link is to toscam.com slash map slash uh, map 3.7.php I even remember that but let me just show you what I mean real quick here on the video itself which is boom that's not really boom but here it is <laughs> I'm sure you had a good laugh about that but okay toscam.com slash map slash map 3.7.php 
for example, if I click on this map right now, it's in Korean, but you'll be fine because it's the same exact map that you will see when you press N in Tree of Saver. You can see they tell you where's the treasure chest, they tell you where's the collector's chest, and it tells you what are the items you need in the collector's chest that you need to find. Alright, so toscamp.com slash map slash 3.7.php link in the description below. Very, very useful for you. So make sure that you can see all the NPCs that should be there uh, is there on the map. Alright, sometimes you'll do quests where the NPC will only show up after you finish a certain segment of the quest. So if you don't see the NPC, don't worry yet. Just go ahead and, and do all the quests first. And also this will actually help you not miss out on any NPC on a certain map. Maybe they're hiding in a corner. And let me just show you guys another type of map here because there are certain things that are not labeled in the map just now like I think forest of, of forest of or forest of prayer I remember the map for the English version you can see all these red arrows this means that this thing can be interacted with sometimes there's cross so toscamp.com slash map dot uh, map 3.7 map 3.7.php very very useful here for you all right and talking about maps that's another thing that you must do in True of Savior to make sure that you maximize the EXP cards that you can get. So, one thing that you need to do, let me just switch this off first, we back to the game, is you need to make sure that you explore your map uh, with 100% completion rate. So what will that do for you? When you do that for all the maps that you explore, even though some maps cannot be completed because there are some hidden areas that you cannot access until you hit a certain main quest or until you use a certain item to review, the hidden area or you just cannot enter the area because IMC games doesn't allow you to go there yet all right so for example if I go to this NPC called the wings of the this is Kaipeda one of the main towns here is uh the icon is this little wing flag thing all right so it is Lena on Kaipeda is Vina on Osha it's another starting town I'll get to that very shortly don't worry about it but basically, share stories of adventure is basically 100% maps that you got. So you can see, I have 3 right now. And if I accept them, bam, look at that. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of cards. So you can see that I got like level 9 EXP cards and I got level 8 EXP cards. And make sure that you kill every normal or elite monster you see for the first time because you also get uh, rewards for killing stuff. And then... I'll get to another very cooling very shortly here, but basically, again, they will give you a whole bunch of EXP cards. Just look at that. Look at that, I got a level 7, a level 4, a random level 4 and 7 here, which I'll just use because I need to use all the level 7s that I have right now. I only keep 8s and 9s right now for my current level, which is 200. So, you can see that making sure that you explore maps 100% is very good and killing every monster that you see for the first time at least once is very good as well. But, so make sure that you do not actually, sometimes map exploration can be a bitch, alright? Sometimes you'll be at like 96.7%, you have no idea why it is 97.6%. So the other link that I want to introduce you to is this guy, he, make, he made a, a beautiful uh, add-on called the EXP Viewer. So hang on, it's this guy, alright? Excrulon, thank you very much, I want, to, I want to give him a huge thanks, a huge shout out to this guy. Okay, the links in the description below again this thing this tree of savior mod will give you the exp thing that you see here right now current required to next level exp per hour estimated time that kind of stuff and it tells you how much exp you get when you kill a mob so it's very useful information for you here and aside from that it also tells you uh, map exploration hang on i need to actually bring up another link here real quick don't mind all my bookmarks here it's don't worry, there's no pawn, guys. Don't try to look. <laughs> Top 10 best farming places in Singapore. Whoa! Where is it? Uh... Okay, here. Can't find remaining spots on the map. I need to go to this Reddit track because it gives you an example of what I mean. So you'll go to a map. Okay, this is a bad example. This one. So you'll go to a map and it will show you red boxes. So red boxes basically indicate to you that the area is not explored. So what you need to do with this add-on is that you just make sure that all the red boxes are, are removed and when you run there the red boxes will be removed and that will basically mean that you can explore 100% and if you look at the first screenshot that I shown earlier which is this one this means that you cannot complete this because there's a hidden area here that you cannot reach which is why your west Saudi woods will never be completed I think I have not completed it as well and I don't know why so this is one hidden area that you cannot complete and 
the EXP viewer, which is the mod, or the add-on will tell you why. So just to make just to make sure to let you know, this mod is uh, cleared by IMC Games. Alright, disclaimer, IMC Games has said that add-ons are allowed. You see. Some guy actually asked again and basically the staff has mentioned that it's all good to use. Alright. So this add-on is approved by IMC Games. You will not get banned for it. Feel free to use it. Again, this link will be in the description below. Go check it out. It's super good to make sure that you can get your 100% map uh, when you play Trail Savior. So that's, that's another thing that you need to make sure that you do because you get EXP cards from map exploration. And also the EXP viewer will give you another thing that's very awesome which is, which is the Adventure Journal. Alright, that's actually something that will give you more EXP cards if you kill a certain monster X number of times. And when you kill that monster in that map, the EXP viewer will tell you at the bottom right corner of your screen exactly how many you need to kill and how many you have killed. Yep, so again, very useful for you. Especially for those people that want to earn points for an adventure journal so that you are like top ranking in the server, alright? So if you want to know why people want to be top ranking in the server, it's because they get awesome statues of themselves in the town, in the main towns, which I can show you here. Which has nothing to do with the leveling guy, but I think you want to know. Interesting to know, alright? You can see rank 1. Rank 2 and 3 got banned, I think. Maybe they bought silver or something, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, rank 2 and 3 recently is gone, rank 10 also gone, so I don't know they got banned or some shit, yeah, that they have been deleted, alright guys, for some reason, but so far, Duck 4, uh, Yashka, and Socks seems to be legit, alright, seems to be legit. Alright, let's move on, let's not make this video too long, I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes. So the next thing that you will ask yourself is that unlike Close Beta 2, unlike Close Beta 2, there's actually two starting towns that you can choose from whenever you make a new character in Trail Savior. It's gonna be Osha or it's gonna be Kaipeda. Honestly speaking, wherever you start from don't really matter unless you're like a super efficient uh, OCD kind of guy that really wants the flow to be there. If not, if you actually play Close Beta 2, I will highly recommend you to start in Osha because the background music for the new maps are really cool and the atmosphere of the new maps are very cool as well so I'll recommend you to start in Osha but if you want to be like ahead of the pack, you're hardcore, I want to be the best, that kind of stuff you know then maybe you want to start in Kaipeda because the flow is slightly better in Kaipeda alright regardless of where you start from okay let me bring up the map first if you start in Kaipeda you'll start in West Saliai Woods if you start in Osha you'll start in the Presa Pond after you finish like the first two two maps like the map that will bring you to the town and then town on the first map you should be able to reach like level character level 13 alright which means you'll be at your first job change go do your job change for the people that start in Kapida you will you will go all the way to Minus Village there are repeatable quests in Minus Village repeatable quests are demarcated by green flags so make sure you don't miss them make sure you accept them again after you completed it they give you a lot of good EXP cards and talking about EXP cards, I have one more very good link to share with you guys. I almost forgot about it, but I remember. Alright. So again, all the links will be in the description below. Alright, one more beautiful link that you should watch out for and make sure that you bookmark it is this one. Alright. You get it from the... I'll give this in the link as well. If you go to my stream, uh, twitch.tv slash kazuaikawa and you type exclamation mark TOS LG, you'll get a link to this, this one, alright. So if you lose the link, don't worry. You can go to my stream and type exclamation mark TOS LG. Click on this link that says a uh, best way to keep to stay on track to follow this list of quests. So you'll bring you to this beautiful Excel sheet. Alright. Credits to Runia. Again, these people are amazing, alright. Look at that. It's even updated until April the 15th, which is not very long ago to be honest. And it gives you all the quests that you can get in Kaipeda, level 1 to 107, Osha, level 1 to 113. Fediman up to level 235. There's even EXP card mapping here that tells you how much EXP you get from all the EXP cards you get. It even tells you rank 7 Shinobi unlock, how, how you need to do it. Rank 5 Chaplain unlock as well. Amazing, alright? So if you don't want, if you don't want to miss any quests or you want to know exactly how many EXP cards you get up to a certain point, up to a certain quest, boom. There you go. Alright? Beautiful people. Okay, beautiful people. But let's go back to the leveling guy, alright? So you will start in West Saudi Woods or Lempressa Pond. You will go ahead and level and drop change for the first time. You will go to Crystal Mine. Alright, the Osha equivalent of Crystal Mine will be the Underground Prison here. And after you finish the Crystal Mine or Underground Prison, main quest line and all the side quests and main quests and repeatable quests that you have, you should be a, should, should be around level 24. Alright, it should be around level 24. If you rush through it especially. 
So if you're level 24 and you realize that uh, Stratus Gorge is level 26 and the next map here is level 29. So you're like, oh man, I'm slightly under level. So what should you, need, what should you do? You need to swap towns, all right? So for the first 90 levels or so for Tree of Savior, you'll be swapping towns a lot. And then eventually you'll merge at this town called Fadimian. But before that, you'll be going Osha, you'll be going Kaipeda. So no matter where you start, you'll just be swapping between the towns. So how do you actually get to the other town without running through? Look at this, they're like level 258 maps before you can even get to Osha, right? There's no way you're gonna get there alive. So you need to go to the item merchant. Okay, and you need to buy. All right, you need to buy the warp scrolls, the Kaipeda warp scrolls to go from Osha to Kaipeda. And of course, to go to Osha from Kaipeda, buy the Osha warp scrolls. I'll recommend you to buy at least five. All right, buy five warp scrolls so that you don't need to come back to the merchant to buy and top up every time. And that's how you get to the other town. So, where do we go from here next? So after you go from here next, okay, let's say if you are studying in Kaipeda, you go to Osha. When you go to Osha, you will realize that the main quest in Osha doesn't show up on the town. You need to go to Lempressa Pond, talk to the guy with the orange flag on his face. He will bring you to Osha, and then you can continue. Alright, to go quest in Woods of the Link Bridge. You do not need to finish all the quests in Lempressa Ponds because they only give level 1 EXP cards, it's not worth it. So I will not say that... I will not recommend you to skip from Woods of the Link Bridge onwards until all the way to the underground prison. So similarly, if you start from Osha and you go Kaipeda, you can skip West Saulei Woods and for those going for Osha to Kaipeda, you actually don't need to go to West Saulei Woods to actually start the main quest. You can actually get the quest straight from uh, Kaipeda and you can you can move on. You can move on to East Saulei Woods and then Minus Village and then so on and so forth. So no matter where you started from, basically if you finish Crystal Mines, you'll go to Osha to finish uh, Underground Prison. And let's say if you start in Osha, you finish Underground Prison, you'll go to Crystal Mines and you'll finish Crystal Mines, alright? and. What you should be looking at is to be at least level 30. And once you have done so, alright, regardless of where you started, I would highly recommend you to come back to start doing your quest from Strata's Gorge all the way to Tanit Garden. And when you do so, you should be around level 32. And once you reach level 32, this is where I'll ask you to sit down, you know, get your butts down, get your get your grinding ass down and get ready to grind for a good one to two hours. I'll say two hours to be to be real with you, but it's gonna be pretty fast because you wanna grind at Tan Garden from level four thirty-two to at least level forty two point five, which will be when we'll do your next uh job advancement, which will get you to rank three. Alright. And once you have done your job advancement, I'm gonna show you the spot first, that's why I'm teleporting there. I'll highly recommend you to come back to grind to level thirty six. Because that will mean that you actually save a lot of cards. For the people that... Uh, this is actually the grind spot. You can see there are a lot of uh, monsters here. Alright, look at that. Look at the number of seed here. Oh my goodness. Look at this. If you are playing Ranger rank 2, just come here and barrage. Easy mode. Easy EXP. Easy life. And look at that. Double, double NPC drops. You can farm decent amount of silver here as well. Even though they don't NPC for a lot. Uh, 300. 400, not too bad to be honest, we'll be able to find your attributes uh, leveling at the start. So, Tanner Garden, this spot on the map, which is the Roju's Plateau, is the grind spot for level 32 to uh, level 42.5 at least. You need to at least level here from 42 to 42.5. This is highly, superly recommended. Alright. And the thing about re uh, Tree of Savior release is there's going to be a lot of people that will be reading guides and they will know that. Basically, this farming spot is like known to everybody for, for those that actually pick Shirt Savior. So, if this place is too packed, the alternative grinding spot will be at Koru Jungle. Alright. Koru Jungle. Uh, let me just bring you guys here. I need to zoom in, I think, because... Yep, Koru Jungle. Alright. So, Koru Jungle... I can, okay, the bad thing about Koru Jungle is because there's no statue there. So, sometimes you'll grind and after a while, your equipment will break. And you'll want to have a goddess statue here so that you can teleport back to the town so that you can repair. So, Tanner Garden is the first choice, but if there's too many people in Tanner Garden, Koru Jungle is an alternative grind spot and it's good to at least level 42.5. So, once you have grind to level 42.5, the problem now is there will be three types of players, alright? So, this is where, or maybe four types of players. One, you haven't reached level 42, you already quit the game. I mean, not quit the game, you you played the game for like two hours, they're done for the day, so you log off. Okay, so this, this guys, you're fine. Take the game at your own pace. 
So for those who are super hardcore, I highly recommend you to at least grind at 10 to 46 so you save a decent amount of EXP cards for later. I'll talk about that later. But basically, uh, at least for a 2.5 for people that want to hit level 50 and at least do the level 50 dungeons for 2 runs uh, before they log off. All right. So once you, once you level 2.5, you do a drop change, you can actually use EXP cards at this juncture to hit level 50 so you can do the level 50 dungeon twice and then log off. And then the third type of people is those that do the same thing to the level 50 dungeon and log off, but they just log back in to do dungeon and log off because they don't have time anymore. Basically, maybe you play the game on the weekend, then weekdays you just do dungeons. So this is the three types of people. And then, of course, the one that I mentioned is the hardcore people. All right. So the hardcore people level to 46, they pop some EXP cards to 50, then they do dungeons. All right. So one thing to take note here is that when you uh, level at Thunder Gun, I forgot to mention, is that you always want to level in a five-man party. So try to group up here because there are certain classes that pretty much suck ass at the start because like, you know, Wizard, you have SP problems, you know. The best people are Swordsmen because they just need to auto-attack. Yep. So try to group up people and you'll be fine here for a while. So once you do your next job change, we'll reach around level 50 and you'll do twice, at least twice, if you have token, thrice, but regardless of whether you have token or not, you should reach at least level 60. Those with token will reach about level 63. And one thing to note is that the dungeon entrance is here, underground chapel uh, dungeon notice board. There's an alternative entry at the Novaha Assembly Hall, but most people, if you want to find people to actually like, public people that want to group up with you, you want to go to Tenet Garden is a more popular spot. So, do your dungeons, you will hit level 60 or 63, depending on whether you got token or not. Then, after that, what you need to do is to catch up on quests. Remember, we have not done the Tenet Garden quest, we have not done the Tenet Chapel quest, which is here, Tenet Church. That's another main quest here. So, basically, at this point, if you locked off and you come back, what you want to do is go do dungeon again. So, for those who are playing this game at your own pace, all right, you're taking it slow, you, you should and you're recommended to do the level 50 dungeon until you hit level 70. If you do so, it means for those people who are chill, you know, just log in, do dungeons, log off, you can do it until, you know, you're level 70. And then once you have done that, you can go ahead and do all your main quests, all right, uh, which is you will start from like, basically after your tenant church quest, he will, he will ask you to go to Veja Ravine, and then Veja Ravine, you'll go to Vieta Gorge. Vieta Gorge will go to Cobalt Forest, and then... Oh, I have no idea to pronounce this place. You'll go to this Glen place, and then Gate Route, after Gate Route, so Dela, Jala Forest, and then Kavala's Forest, and then from here onwards, you'll go back to Osha, alright? And then you'll do all the quests for Novaha Assembly Hall, Carolis Springs, Letta Stream, you will not really do here yet, like most people will skip the right side first, they will go to Gateway of the Great King, Remtis Reach, and then finally you will like hit the crossroads where you will hit Tilta's Valley. Alright, so, if you are those hardcore players that after you finish the level 50 dungeon, you are only level 60 or 63, they are recommended to pop some level 3 or 4 cards to hit 65, and then you will do all the quests that I mentioned, all the maps, until you hit Tilta's Valley. Why Tilta's Valley? Because Tilta's Valley will bring you to this map called the Royal Mausoleum Workers Launch, which is your grinding spot for level 65 all the way until 86. And I'm going to share with you right now why it's so good. Alright, so let's go back to the statue. I'm going to bring myself there. Alright, so again, after you reach 60, 63, you only maybe you want to hit to, you want to pop some cards at 65, but actually you don't need to. You can go back to the areas that you have not. Uh, all the maps that you have not done between Osha or Kaipita, depending on where you started, just make sure you hop around both of them, clear all the maps that are within your level until you hit uh, Tilta's Valley, and then there's this place called the Royal Museum uh, Workers' Launch that you can enter from Tilta's Valley on the right side. So you did realize that Royal Museum Workers' Launch just now on the map didn't show that there's a statue, because there's actually a goddess statue on the second floor. So whenever you enter this area, make sure you go to the basement all right, which is the Constructor's Chapel to activate the statue first so you can actually get back to the Worker's Launch a lot faster and a lot easier compared to, you know, running all the way from Tilta's Valley from Ackerman's, Ackerman's Reach. All right, so pop that statue 
and I'm show I'll be showing you why uh, these areas are good for EXP or good for grinding, especially for those who are hardcore, you're not going to sleep, you want to make sure that you're ahead of the pack. But you don't want to pop EXP card, so you want to find a grinding spot. So here it is. This is why these grinding spots are good. They're actually basically governed by uh what I call dynamic events in Shield Savior. The mob density here is pretty good. By the way, if you are going to play the Sorcerer's class, the Tempest Shooter boss actually spawns here. FYI, if you actually check the database, it tells you that it's in the Constructor's Chapel, which is wrong, alright? So it's here in the Worker's Launch. So why this place is good is because there's this evil purifier thingy, alright? I think someone's actually doing it. What happens is you activate this thing. Let me kill everything first. Okay, one sec. Now that I'm not disturbed, alright. So I activated the purifier. What happens is there'll be 300 seconds. Look at this, look at all the monsters. They will spawn from these three separate rooms, alright. Again, it's at the Blacksmith's Workshop. Mobs, monsters will keep spawning in these three rooms and they will congregate at this evil energy purifier. So if you have a team of five, highly recommended to come here, alright, because you get basically Five minutes of unlimited, I won't say unlimited, but five minutes of uh, monster spawns that will keep coming at you. What they usually do is they split each other in the three rooms. But I think the guy that is here might not be in EXP range of the guy at the top. I'm not very sure. So this is this is the level 65 grinding spot because you can see the monsters are level 74 plus 10 levels of you. If you come in at 65, it's a bit tough, but you'll level up very quickly here. Alright, you can see, purifying the evil energy within 250 seconds remaining. So this thing will last for, I wouldn't say 300 seconds, probably 360 seconds. It's probably 6 minutes, because that, two, that 250 seconds message took a while to, to pop. So this is why this place is good, alright, the worker's launch. Because you have this event. And after you have done this thing for 6 minutes, you will actually be on a cooldown for, I believe, 6 minutes as well. So when that happens, go around the map and start killing stuff. And this should be able to get you to at least level 75 pretty quickly. So that's the first grinding spot. Once you hit 75 or 78, they recommend to grind until 78.5 or 79 because that will be your rank uh, 4 drop change. Alright, your rank 4 drop change will be at around 78 or 79 or crackers level. So once you have done that, you'll realize that EXP is slightly slower and you want to get a newer spot. So the next spot that you want to do I'm pretty sure this one is taken because it is always taken by players whenever I'm there. So you go down to the Constructor's Chapel and similarly to the Worker's Launch Blacksmith uh, Workshop area, this one is also activated via an event which requires you to activate a light beacon at the Fatama Oratorium. Alright, Fatama Oratorium. And here we go. The mobs are level 78. Okay, no one is actually doing it. Or maybe it's uh, done and it's on cooldown right now. So, okay, it's not done. So you see this thing, right? You activate it. Oh, it's already done already, so I can't show you. Let me try to change channel. Maybe uh, the guy is actually doing it right now. All right, here we go. Let me just kill everything first. Yeah, okay, so people are doing it. All right, it's down there. So you can see it's another trend in 60 seconds. What happens is that, oh, it's gonna lag is that these apparitions all right you can see these guys are actually rotating between three channels look at that look at the number of mobs that just spawn and it's going to be happening look at that this is just exp you can see there's even one guy trying to ks here the ice landed guy maybe he's just camping to see if he gets uh, a chance to join a party but basically look at that the elf apparition spawn is really really very good. So this will be where you will actually grind all the way I would say to 86. Remember I mentioned that 80 to 86 is one uh, EXP wall supposedly that you need to watch out for. So this will help you get by with that. And obviously people who watch leveling guides will know this spot so there isn't actually an alternative spot for this except that there's actually one more uh, light beacon uh, triggered event at the third floor but it's not as good as this one. Alright, even though it still attracts monsters. So I'm still going to show you guys that one. Maybe you can use that one instead if this one is, is overly packed for you. Alright. You can see like, Osha uh, in the early access server has already been out for like 3 weeks and even until today, people are still using that leveling spot for their alternate characters of course. Or maybe for people that just joined the early access. 
but yeah so that's a really really very uh, good grinding spot for until level 86 then the last one here oh i forgot to mention the cancery boss actually spawns uh on the constructor's chapel it drops the it drops the cancery card which is the only insect type card that will drop for you until you hit level 200 so if you're playing a wugushi just to let you know oh someone actually uh activated it already so it's actually over here yeah there's a guy here so you activate this beacon the storage likes beacon it's actually blocked by a certain like uh like basically something that you can uh dis destroy and then you will show the beacon and you can see again monsters will start spawning and then they will start going down this lane so you can see a party doing it as well so i believe that's the three grinding spots that i can share with you for leveling from 65 to uh 86. if you are really like you really want to hit 90 asap you do not actually need to grind from 80 to 86. i didn't do that on my level 100 hoplite all i did was uh, I did dungeons until level 70, I went to do main quests, and I did main quests all the way until the Royal Mausoleum, not this Royal Mausoleum, another Royal Mausoleum, which is this one, this one over here, the Royal Mausoleum, which will have five floors, it's part of main quest, so you'll not miss it, and I did until the, like the second floor, I popped all the level 4 cards, that, I think level 4 cards that I had, or some level 5 cards, and I got the level 90, so, Again, if you're the super hardcore one, you know, you want to make sure that you have as many EXP cards as you have, then you might want to grind. But if you're not, if you're those chill, semi-core, you know, there's actually no need to grind at all. Just do your quest. Do your quest, pop EXP cards. Once you get to level 90, your level 4 or 5 EXP cards don't really matter when you hit level 100, to be honest. So, you don't need to overly save your level 4 and 5 EXP cards because the level 4 and the level 5 EXP cards, the EXP difference that the cards gives it's only like 2000 so 4 and 5 level 4 and 5 cards exp difference is actually very small but 5 and 5 to 6 is a huge difference and you start getting level 6 cards from when you start to do the uh Fadiman maps or rather let me just check real quick i think i need to get out of this place first real quick before i get ganked let me just go back to Fadiman. all right because i don't think i need to stay in osha anymore so let me just check my leveling guide notepad that I wrote to see if I missed anything. If not, yep, get the 86, then pop some cuts. I mean, your EXP curve will be set at 86. So 86 to 90, you'll probably take like what, 5 level 4 cuts? Or maybe 10 level 4 cuts and you'll easily hit level 90. Get to 90 and then it's very simple. Just do level 90 dungeon and bam, you're level 100. So you can say that the leveling guide is for level 1 to 90, not really level 1 to 100 because 90 to 100 is just it's just your level 90 dungeon run. And just to let you know, the level 90 dungeon run drops this weapon called the RD Dagger. If you are new to this game, this dagger is very very valuable up to level 170 before another dagger of the same form actually drops but it is better in terms of base attack. So do not NPC your RD Dagger. Do not sell it very cheap. Let me just show you like how expensive it is real quick. All right, so that people who are new you don't get scammed or cheated. All right, so even for a server that is three weeks old, the cheapest RD dagger right now is eight hundred and fifty k. All right, why is it very good? Because it gives you fire property attack. Basically, you just imagine one five three damage added to all your skills and attacks that you do for which whatever character that you play. Doesn't matter if that class doesn't have any fire property attack. So the way this game works, any property attack, fire, lightning, ice, whatever, as long as it's mentioned there in the weapon or sub-weapon, because daggers are sub-weapons, that property damage will be added to any damage that you do. Be it skill, be it normal attack, be it anything. So that's why it is very useful because basically it's plus 153 damage to anything that you do. And at the low levels, it is very useful for auto attack classes that go like full decks, even if they have no damage. For them to do damage. So RD Dagger very very good. So when you do the level 90 dungeon, that is where it drops. Keep your eye out of it. It drops on the boss cube at the end. Alright. So I think that's about it for the leveling guide for Trail of Savior for 1 to 100. Make sure to check out all the links that I gave you below because they're really very useful. And actually the other link that I gave you, just a final one before I go. It actually gives you the flow of where you actually let's say you start start in Kaipida, right? This one. So it tells you like how you actually actually quest the flow. You start in Kaipida, alright, bam bam bam, you can see you go up to minus uh, crystal mine, then bam, you go here. 
and then bam, you go here. Up the tenant garden, bam, you go here. Four, and then five, and then six, and then so on and so forth. So this, I'll I'll put this link in the description below as well. This is very useful to know where you should go for quests when you're transiting. If not, I think that's it from me. If you learn from learn something from this guy, or if you're playing Tree of Savior and you know that you have friends who are looking for a Tree of Savior leveling guide, share with them this video, share with them all the awesome EXP viewer, the awesome links that I share with you, the toscam.com so that you'll never miss a quest or NPC. Share with them this video, share with them this guide. I'll also do a written version of this guide, like a TLDR kind of thing in the description as well. So if you are lazy to watch the video, you can do that. But at least the Video shows you the exact grinding spot and how the actually how the Royal Mausoleum uh, Workers Lounge, the Constructors Chapel, and the storage area actually works. All right, so I think that's about it. My name is Mila Kwa Kazu. Thanks for watching once again. God bless. Stomp the like button if you enjoyed this video or you learned something for it. God bless. Take care, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Goodbye.